Well, good morning. Welcome again to Word for the Week, our online book study series here at Cornerstone Faith Community Church. My name is Pastor Jeremy, and I am so glad to be with you today uh, for this final um, episode of our series here, looking at The Prayer of Agar by J. Payleitner. Uh, today, uh, we take a look at chapters 14 and 15 of the book, where uh, Payleitner kind of gets us to the heart, to the, to the sweet spot, as he calls it, of um, Agar's prayer and of his purpose in writing this book. Um, so he reiterates Agar's prayer for us again. He says two things. I ask of you, Lord, do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. Uh, Payleitner talks about how um, uh, we are called to live in the sweet spot of God. We, though as humans, right, we, we try to choose other things that we think will make us more happy or make us more content or help us to, to feel better or make life easier. But the sweet spot of God is really where life is easiest and life is best. And uh, Payleitner uses an incredible word here in chapter 14 to sort of talk about the opposite of uh, the sweet spot. And the opposite of, the, of living in God's sweet spot, Payleitner calls living on the fringe. And that's really where I want to spend the bulk of our time today. Um, I want to talk about fringe living. So I think there are a lot of different ways that we could define what it means to live on the fringe. Um, one certain, certainly one way to, to define living on the fringe is living in some way that is um, absent of God, uh, meaning that we either reject God, uh, we have chosen to walk away from God, we have chosen to distance ourselves from God. Um, we are walking through a time of our life where we are uh, struggling with questions. Uh, we are doubting God to some extent. That's certainly one sense of living on the fringe. I think there are other senses, though, of living on the fringe. Like, for example, when you recognize a gift that God has given to you, uh, an ability, but it isn't something that you really want to do or you feel comfortable doing, especially maybe for the church. And so you sort of step back and choose not to use that gift, not to have that gift be fulfilled in the body of Christ because of, you know, wondering what people might think of you or not wanting to be in the limelight or, you know, some other reason. That's certainly living on the fringe also, not to, sort of fulfilling the purpose of God gift, God's gifts to you. There is yet another living on the fringe that I think is most concerning, uh, especially now as we begin to turn this corner out of uh, a COVID-19 fear and hopefully back into a sense of reality and normally, normal, normalcy. Um, the, the, the other sort of way I see living on the fringe is those folks who have this loose connection to the church, to God, to Christ, to, to the body of, of Christ. Uh, what I mean by loose connection, uh, sometimes these people have been called priesters. Uh, they come on Christmas and Easter, but you know, sometimes they're hardly even that. Um, or sometimes they are people who are here much more regularly or at some church much more regularly. But when we really look at their life, with the church, within the church, within the body of Christ, we don't see any life. We don't see any activity. We don't see any any liveliness. Living on the fringe, I think, can, can very much mean um, standing at a distance, if you would, from, from God. Not rejecting, uh, not turning away from necessarily, but standing at a distance, getting just close enough to kind of pick a la carte, if you will, from the church, the things that you want or, or feel like you need, and, and leave behind the things that just seem to be too much work. Uh, Payleitner on page 76 talks about uh, living in the sweet spot versus living in the fringe. He says, perhaps the best thing about living in God's sweet spot is that you can move forward to explore life 
securing your relationship with the creator of the universe. When you find yourself panicking over worldly successes or failures, it's reassuring to know God loves you no matter what. This is true when you're on a winning streak or when you're hurting, when you're seeking his face or turning away. Whether your cup is empty or overflowing, the fact that God loves you just as you are is the truest thing about God, about you. God isn't impressed with your Rolex watch, your washboard abs, your trophy spouse, even your million, million dollar gift to charity. In much the same way, from God's perspective, it's okay if your lawn has a few dandelions, if your car has some rust spots, or if you don't get into Harvard. And he wants you to be okay with it too. In that sweet spot, when you choose to depend on God's guidance and provision, your most important activity is to lean into God. Keep listening. Expect clear instruction. We're promised in James 4 and 8, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. The point of dwelling in God's sweet spot is that we are so perfectly positioned with him to be able to hear him and respond to him. We can live life as he would have us live it out for him, not for ourselves. In chapter 15 of our book today, Paylightner calls it the sweet spot bonus. Um, he brings to mind Ecclesiastes uh, 3, 12 through 13. For I know there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live, that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction all, in all their toil. That is the gift of God. And uh, Paylightner talks about how um, there are three sort of key components uh, to this sweet spot. Be happy, do good, find satisfaction. Be, do, find. Be happy, be blessed, be in God, live in God, live what God has for you. And, and in order to do that, you have to have a relationship with him. You have to have a conversation with him. You have to constantly be asking him, what now, Lord? How now, Lord? What are we going to do today? We, we kind of got to constantly be in conversation with him. Uh, the, the second piece is the do. Well, then once you've asked, once you're being with God, then once you've asked, once you know what it is, you've got to go out and do it. And, and you've got to be willing to serve God and, and, and love him and live for him. And then after we've done those two things, that's where we find the sweet spot. That's where we find satisfaction. That's where we find comfort in him. I hope that you guys have enjoyed Pay Lightner's book. Um, it's certainly a great little book. Uh, recommend that you maybe share it with a friend um, and uh, encourage them as they read it. Um, as I mentioned before, um, this study series is going to draw to a close in this format after today. Um, and so uh, we're going to take a little hiatus for the summer. And when we come back in the fall, we are going to relaunch this uh, study um, on our podcast, which can be downloaded from Google Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, um, uh, lots of great different ways you can download that podcast. Just look for Life at CFCC life at cfcc in any uh, podcast app and you will be able to find this study uh, parts and pieces and parts of our sunday morning services um, uh, worship music by our worship team and a lot of great other podcast things that are coming your way as we launch uh, that this fall so hope that you'll join us there and i hope that you had a good time work working through these books together with me um, until we meet again, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he lift his face upon you and be gracious unto you. And may he give you his favor. Have a great week, everybody. Talk to you soon.